Sonnet 29 by William Shakespeare. In this lesson, you will learn more about William Shakespeare and his poem Sonnet 29. You will also learn some important literary terms and how to work with and analyze literature in general and specifically then poetry. William Shakespeare, 1564 till 1616. William Shakespeare is considered to be the greatest playwright and poet of the English language. He wrote 38 plays, some of which you see on the right-hand side, like Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Henry IV, Macbeth, A Midsummer Night's Dream, and Othello. He also wrote 154 sonnets and various other poems. Stunt says, over the last 400 years, Shakespeare's words have entertained and moved us, giving us new perspectives on ourselves and others. A sonnet is a specific type of poetry. The sonnet derives from 13th century Italy uh, and the Italian word sonetto, which means little sound or song. Typical themes in a sonnet is love or being rejected. By the one that you love. In a sonnet you often find a speaker, an I, who investigates himself, his thoughts and his emotions. What's most typical about the sonnet though is that it has a fixed pattern and structure. The sonnet that we're going to look at is a so-called Shakespearean sonnet or English sonnet. Sonnet 29 when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope, with what I most enjoy contented least. Yet in these thoughts myself almost despising, Haply I think on thee and then my state, Like to the lark at break of day arising From sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, That then I scorn to change my state with kings. Before we go into analyzing it, I'd like to uh, go through the content in Norwegian, to a large extent anyway. So let's have a look line by line what this poem means. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, as you can see in disgrace i unåde. Så når jeg personen er i unåde med helle sitt eller med andre mennesker, altså føler seg ikke særlig lykkelig eller særlig heldig, I all alone beweep my outcast state. Be beweep er å gråte over. Outcast, å være utstøtt. Så jeg gråter altså helt alene over min utstøtte stilling eller min utstøtte position. And trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries. Og plager den døve himmelen med mine nyttesløse rop eller min nyttesløse gråt. And look upon myself and curse my fate. Jeg ser på meg selv og jeg forbanner skjevnen min. Wishing me like to one more rich in hope. Jeg ønsker at jeg var lik en som var mer rik på håpet. Featured like him. Jeg skulle ønske jeg så ut som han. Like him with friends possessed. At jeg hadde de vennene som den eller den har. Desiring this man's art and that man's scope. Altså, jeg skulle ønske jeg hadde kunnskapene til den mannen, eller friheten, eller mulighetene til den andre. With what I most enjoy, contented least. Det som jeg pleide å like best, det liker jeg nå minst. Yet. In these thoughts myself almost despising, men. I, med disse tankene, når det er nesten sånn at jeg forakter meg selv. Happily I think on thee and then my state. 
Da tenker jeg fornøyd eller lykkelig eller glad på dig, og så blir mitt, er det mitt humør eller min melankolske tilstand. Like the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth. Lik lerken ved dagsgry reiser sig fra den mørke eller dystre eller nedstemte jorda. Sings hems at heaven's gate. Altså mitt humør, min tilstand, synger nå plutselig hymner eller salmer ved himmelens port. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings. For det å huske på din søte, vakre kjærlighet. Gi mig sånn uh, uh, wealth. Gi mig rikdom. That then I scorn to change my state with kings. At da vil jeg ikke bytte ut min, uh, min uh, tilstand med konger. Det er til og med un under min verdighet å gjøre det. I scorn to change my state with kings. So, what's the theme in Sonnet 29? Well, I think it's quite obvious that the theme is love uh, and how knowing that someone uh, loves you can help you when you're feeling sad and depressed. Love and friendship can really change the way you look at things and give you hope and inspiration to go on even when you feel that everything around you goes wrong. Especially the last two lines in Sonnet 29, I think, emphasize the theme of love. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Let's have a look at the structure of the sonnet. As I mentioned, Sonnet 29 is a Shakespearean sonnet, and it therefore follows a certain pattern that's typical of its, its uh, genre. Sonnet 29 is actually divided into three so-called quatrains, which means uh, four lines that are connected through end rhymes, and a couplet, which is two lines connected through end rhymes. You can see the three quatrains here, and the couplet at the end. In the first two quatrains, the speaker talks about the times when he feels unfortunate and unhappy and he tells us how discontented he is with himself and his life and that he often wants to be someone else. But after these two quatrains, there's a turn, there's a change of mood in the poem and it comes right here. Uh, in the third quatrain, the speaker starts to think about somebody whom he loves, and now he changes from feeling very miserable to feeling joy and hope. And then in the couplet, the speaker gives us his conclusion to the poem. He says that because that person loves him, his life is so good that he wouldn't really change it after all. His life might be hard, but he will endure it because of his loved one. There's also... Um, a rhyme scheme that's typical for these poems that's used here. And you can see the end rhymes that every other line or verse rhyme. You have, for example, eyes, cries, state, fate. You have hope, scope, possessed, least. Now, wait a minute, possessed, least. Does that really rhyme? Well, not completely, but it's what we call a half rhyme. You have despising, arising, state, gate, and then brings kings. So this pattern is typical of the Shakespearean sonnet. The meter or the rhythm that is used is also typical for the Shakespearean sonnet. You might have noticed that there's a set rhythm throughout the sonnet. Let's have a look. When in disgrace with fortune and man's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state and trouble deaf heaven 
with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate and so on you get the point now you can see and this is getting very technical and quite advanced but you have something called an I am here which is a, a kind of rhythm where you have uh, one unstressed syllable and one stressed syllable and you have five of these unstressed and stressed syllables which makes it an iambic pentameter penta meaning five anyway the point is um, that the the together with the rhyme scheme the rhythm gives the poem a very clear very measured pattern and this might help the reader in understanding the poem because it emphasizes important words but it also gives a feeling of continuity and musicality as well as making the poem well easier to remember so now we've looked at the structure of a poem um, let's move on to, to looking at the poetic devices, such as images, the imagery, symbols, contrasts, and the language. Now, the language in Sonnet 29 is not very complicated or really that difficult to understand. But what's interesting to look at whenever you analyze poetry is the choice of words. Uh, Let's have a look at, for example, the word sullen that Shakespeare has uh, chosen to use. Now, sullen in Norwegian, you can translate it to either gretten, surmulne, tver, uh, or gråaktig, mørk, gromsøtte. So, the sullen earth represents not only a natural phenomenon, but it also reflects kind of the speaker's uh, state of mind. Now, when it comes to imagery and poetic devices, we can find several interesting examples in this uh, sonnet. One image could, for example, be uh, Heaven's Gate. Uh, this image gives the reader very many positive connotations. And by using an image like this, Shakespeare makes the reader think of happiness or peace, beauty, divinity. Now the reader can perhaps understand even better how good his love makes him feel. You also have some personifications in this poem. For example, you have Fortune here, written with a capital F. Um, and the I person also talks about being in disgrace with Fortune, given Fortune kind of a human life. Um, in the third verse, Shakespeare personifies heaven, given heaven uh, being deaf. Shakespeare personifies his state too when he says that his state sings hymns. So his state sings hymns. All of these are examples of personifications. Um, these personifications, well, they help bring life to the poem itself, in my opinion. Shakespeare also uses a simile and summoning in his sonnet. In the third quatrain, he compares his feelings when he thinks of love with the lark. Like to the lark at break of day arising. Um... A lark that flies up towards the sky and I f find this the most beautiful meaningful image uh, in the poem altogether. The lark in addition to being a simile can also be a symbol. Uh, a symbol of freedom and the joy that he feels when he thinks of the person he loves and the sullen earth that the lark rises from is probably uh, a metaphor for the dark and depressing mood that uh, he has had earlier in the poem. The last poetic device that I would like to point out is Shakespeare's use of contrast. 
in the poem. He, for example, um, there's a clear contrast between the speaker's relationship with the world in general and his relationship with one he loves. Life in the big world is tough and difficult, while his love, in contrast, makes him feel uh, happy, rich and content. We also find a contrast between the material goods and being loved. For example, when the speaker says, For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Having somebody to love is such a great gift that he even feels it would be beneath his dignity, actually scorn to change his life with a king who has, well, a lot of money. By using these poetic devices, I think Shakespeare emphasizes the theme of the sonnet, which, again, is about love and the fact that Having somebody to love you will light up your life and help you through hard times. Now, one of the things I like the best about Sonnet 29 is the theme, actually, and the fact that this theme is just as important today as it was 400 years ago. Because it doesn't really matter how much money you have if you don't have anybody to love. The sources I've used are listed here and I've also um, suggested some further reading. I have a long list of links from uh, Stunt where you can find lots of information about Shakespeare. You can Google him as well but be aware that you have to be a bit critical because there are millions and millions of pages out there. If you go to ndla.no, Engelsk, Literature, Film and Music, you'll find more information about how to analyze poetry. Also look in your textbook in English. Use your textbook in Norwegian if you want to work on literary terms or how to analyze poetry in general. And there's also going to be a written analysis of Sonnet 29 in our course material. Thank you for watching.